So good evening, friends. We'll start with today's session of Organa. We are discussing regarding the roots of administration of the homeopathic medicines in the last lecture. And we have discussed the two aphorisms where Hanuman have mentioned that basic root is always from the mouth on the tongue, the whole GI tract to the stomach. Wherever the medicine touches that part, the now endings are there. That is the best route of administration. Second route of administration which he mentioned is the nasal route. Olfaction is also because nasal mucous membrane is also a sensitive area where your medicine acts very perfectly. These are two important ways through which you can give the homeopathic remedy. There are many more. Even if you put the medicine on the skin and just rub it over there, that also gets a in uh, that also. Uh, acts on the human being, human reacts to that also. But comparatively, the action is slow. Action is not instantaneous, which happens to be there at the mucous membrane level. And that's why Hanuman says it is the best thing is that to administer it by the mouth or nasal root. There is one footnote <clears throat> which we have not learned yesterday, where he has mentioned one more route of administration and that is more important. There are questions which arises in the mind of the students. How to give a medicine to an infant who is just newborn? How to give a medicine to an infant of a three months, six months? And everyone tries their level best in different manner. Everyone, someone tries that to dissolve it in water, to dissolve it in milk and give it to the patient. Hanuman says something more than that. And it is also one of the things which acts very perfectly. And that's why this footnote plays a very vital role. We'll start with, with this footnote. Footnote number 164. The power of medicines acting upon the infant through the milk of the mother or a wet nurse is wonderfully helpful. So Hanuman here says that you give the medicine to the mother and through the milk it will work on the infant. Every disease in the child leads to the rightly chosen homeopathic medicine given in moderate doses to the nursing mother and so administered is more easily and certainly utilized by these new world citizens than is possible in the latter years. So this is the one more route of administration of medicine specifically when the infant is there who is breastfeeding. You give the medicine to the mother and it triplex it acts dynamically through the mother's milk. It is not something which is in material form penetrates to the milk. <clears throat> it is not a, like allopathic medicine which penetrates to the mother's milk. The dynamics of the mother's changes, those dynamics reflects in the mother's milk, which works on the infant and definitely there is a change which happens in the infant. So this is one more better aspect of administration of medicine which Hanuman have mentioned and I have tried it in some some of the patients. I have seen one one day child who has snuffles. She was my student and there was seizure was done and on day one only the child was having a blocked nose with a lot of sneezing and now they have put the atrivian pediatric drops, etc. But nothing was working. The child was crying. And so, I have used the Sambucus Niagara to the mother. I have given one dose of Sambucus Niagara to the mother. And I asked her to feed the child. After Sambucus Niagara 30, one or two doses were given. And after one or two feeds, the child's nose is absolutely normal. So this is this is a very important route of administration which works instantaneously in the infants. Since most infants usually have imparted to them sora through the milk of the nurse, if they do not already possess it through heredity from the mother, they may be at the same time protected antisorically by means of the mother, by means of the milk of the nurse rendered medicinally in this manner. So, but the case of mothers in this 
in their first pregnancy by means of mild antisori treatment, especially with the sulfur dynamizations, prepared according to the direction of this in this edition, aphorism 270, is indispensable in order to destroy the sora, that producer of the most chronic diseases, which is given them hereditarily, destroy it both within themselves and in the fetus, thereby protecting posterity in advance. See what he explains. Even the fetus who is inborn, which in the womb, and you consider that we understand the mother's aspect, you understand the mother's problems, you find it out the Sora is there, and because of Sora she is in trouble, you give that anti-Sori, the sulfur to the mother, and it not only protects the mother, but it also protects the child from getting the disease Sora. It works transplacentally. It works on the fetus and removing the sora, soric miasm, the soric taints from the child, the newborn infant. This is the very important thing. You, if you open the Allen's keynotes and open the sora, you know, what he has mentioned over there, that is the very important thing. We have the Allen's keynotes. There is one sentence I'm and which is very, very essential, which we can utilize. There also, Alan had mentioned that to correct the soric diathesis of the unborn, that sentence is there in Soranam, in Alan's skin. This is very important thing. These are the things which never we never take into consideration, but treating the mother during the gestation plays a very vital role. It removes the soric diathesis. It is in Soranam, in my book, it is the page number 233, what he says, during pregnancy, most obstinate vomiting, fetus moves too violently, when the best selected remedy fails to relieve, to correct the soric diathesis of the unborn. See, this is, this is what he has mentioned, and this is the preventive medicine. So, we can prevent the disorders in future if we treat the lady during gestation, and it happens. After 32 years of my practice, I am observing that those patients who have consumed exclusively homeopathy right from the start of my practice, they are absolutely remaining in the state of health even at the latter age also. One patient who came to me in 1993 or 1992, they retired from the Mumbai and they came to their native place nearby Sangam, near Raithwad. And this fellow, this fellow has wants homeopathic medicine. So he, I took his case, I started homeopathy. Since then, till today, he is on homeopathy. 32 years of my practice means he was re he retired in 58 age, add 32 years, and he is 90 years, and still he has not consumed allopathic medicine, and still he is blind. This works. See, this is very important thing that it brings the health in such a manner. So giving a medicine to unborn is very important thing, and you, you must take the case and utilize proper remedy and which works transplacentally and removes the soric diathesis. This is what he wants to explain. And this is one root of administration of the homeopathic medicine. What he further says over there, this is true of pregnant women thus treated. They have given birth to the child, children, usually more healthy and stronger. So if you give a medicine during that phase, the child who is born is more healthy and stronger to the astonishment of the everybody. So Astonishment when you chakit kar. And this happens. This happens because the mother's state of health becomes normal. After correcting the sorry death, his mother's state of health becomes normal, which reflects in the fetus. So see, one must think about all those things in, in life. When we prescribe remedy, we must think the logic should be there. Animal was more logical. 
he has tried his level best he has experimented and with experimentation he is saying this this has a meaning so we we come across many many cases like this our relatives are there just observe them if you feel give them take this one dose just give them this dose tell them that it will be very beneficial for you and your child see what happens it will not cause any harm keep it in your mind because you are not giving any material medicine whatever you are giving is the dynamic medicine and once you give dynamic medicine it reflects it reflects the change in that lady automatically it reflects the change in that fetus and that's why it is a very important remedy we have important way of root of administration and one should not forget so hanuman mentions all those things what is to conclude that footnote what he says a new confirmation of the great truth of sora theory discovered by me and this is this is the thing which he has explained that sora which was discovered by hanuman and it has really a meaning because of long standing even generations together this sora is there so sora is nothing but any skin any new disorder developed after suppression of the skin eruption specifically in vesicular eruptions or each the internal development of new disorders is called as a sori disorder this is what hanuman said and this sora is there it transmits from generations together <laughs> so to correct that soric diathesis this is the way with which you can approach and it works so one more root of administration which he has mentioned over there and there is one more aphorism which we'll learn today the uh, there is again a big footnote to that paragraph that footnote will keep for tomorrow because that footnote we have to understand where he has explained something here see what he says in the 285 regarding the roots of administration and when one should not apply it on skin that is what he is explaining aphorism 285 in this way the cure of very old diseases may be furthered by physician applying externally rubbing it in the back arms extremity the same medicine gives internally and which shows itself curative in doing so he must avoid parts subject to pain or spasms or skin eruption see what he is explaining yes root of administration by applying medicines on the skin it's better it can work but if that part is having an eruption and if you apply medicine over there then there may be possibility it might suppress that this this should not happen. if there is a spasm if there is a pain in muscles and you are applying the medicine locally it may suppress the things because locally when it acts sometimes internal disorder remains as it is and you treat it externally like allopathy and that's why if one should be very cautious while treating the patients externally by these means and that's why anuman says i never advocates to apply those medicines externally so this is these are the different roots of administration which he has mentioned over there and in this footnote he answers regarding something but that footnote will keep for tomorrow because he has commented more about the mineral baths and we have to learn that also so that is a big footnote uh, footnote along with a very important topic of mineral baths and hanuman's comment about the mineral baths so we'll conclude here on this note that different roots of administration we have learned all the roots of administration as explained by anemon in these two aphorisms 284 and 285 along with their footnotes any queries are there we'll have a discussion otherwise we'll conclude any hello sir yes uh, sir there is one confusion in my mind uh, hmm. just now you told give antisoric to a pregnant lady hmm. uh do we have to give sulfur to every lady anti soric uh, dose or not sulfur what else not sulfur it depends upon case it is what so he has mentioned about soranum but soranum is also he has mentioned that if the child is too too restless that he kicks the mother's womb restless child 
and with a soric diathesis, the mother is there, then you have to give sorilum. According to the case, it varies. According, it might be a sorilum, it might be sulfur, it might be anything else. It varies. We have to okay. learn the route of administration. Okay. Hmm. And if if we uh, want to give in which month and in in which potency, sir? You can give any time, but basically early in the uh, pregnancy, it is always better to give because it then it works beautifully with the health and health develops properly during those nine months. So first second month, if you find it out and you give it, it is always better. And okay. potency is depending upon the susceptibility of that individual, specifically. Generally, medium potency should be chosen and give one or two doses, that's all. Don't repeat it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any other query? Yes. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, uh, now it is of uh, severe uh, sunstroke cases, sir. Mm. They are having fevers. Fevers are subsiding by giving liquids and everything, but the aching of legs are remaining, sir. What you are prescribing? Actually, for one person, natrum carb, and for another, I have given gelsemium, sir. Okay. Uh, if it is an acute sunstroke during an attack, glonine is the remedy. After effects of sunstrokes, Natrum carb is the remedy. Natrum carb after... is not the remedy for the acute sunstroke. The after okay. effects, because of sunstroke, if something happens later, natrum carb is definitely a remedy. Okay. At that okay. moment, to bring that patient out, glonine, belladonna, these are wonderful remedies which works instantaneously. Okay, so, so okay. natrum carb you can use like that that if uh, the if the pains are there in the lower extremities after the sunstroke yes definitely you can give natrum carb that is a wonderful remedy because it covers the carbon is there in that oh. and carbon oh. works okay okay so thank you is even you can think about if pain in calves are there rustox is a very oh. important remedy mm -hmm. okay so yeah. Sir, natrum carb in which potency will be better, sir? 200. Medium potency is always better. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, we'll conclude today's session. We'll meet tomorrow at the same time with next step or next footnote. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.